stories, significant entrepreneurs, significant business results. Well, welcome to Significant TV. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is an entrepreneur, a venture capitalist, and a philanthropist, Wayne Kimmel, managing partner of 76 Capital. Wayne, welcome to Significant TV. Well, Fran, thank you so much for having me. It's really sure. great to be here. Sure, it's my pleasure. You know, we were talking before the cameras started rolling about six degrees of Wayne Kimmel. And you were sharing your philosophy about relationships and networking and the fact that when you invest, you invest in nice, smart people. And I was sharing with you that that's a little bit unusual. Why that philosophy? Well, for me, it's all about working with people that are smart, that are nice, and who have this idea and who want to change the world, who want to do things that can truly impact society and, the, and this whole world. And I want to work with people like that. And I mm -hmm. want to work with people that are good people. Right. Because many times, the kinds of companies that we invest in, they're not overnight successes. Absolutely not. It t usually takes uh, 10, 15 years to become an overnight success. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right. exactly right. And so if you're going to work with someone for that long period of time, mm -hmm. they better be the right kind of people. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that we think about as soon as we get started. Okay. So tell me about how you got started. I mean, you have done a lot of things in your life. Why, what kind of first put you on the path of entrepreneurism and really saying, I'm excited about this, and then later saying, I'm going to invest in other people? Well, for me, you know, it's always been, I've always had this passion and drive for helping other people. And you know, I think I learned that from my parents. You know, it's something that they, they instilled in me as, as a child. And then I got that extra boost from my wife of like, you know, we, you can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. and, like, and that's something that I try to then try to put that onto other people and help other people with that. So at 29 years old, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go and dive into this world of venture capital, of startups, of technology, and just get into it. Mm -hmm. And I was challenged by my first investor ever. <laughs> and he said to me, if you raise $9 million, I'll give you one. Wow, that doesn't seem fair. And I, what kind of ratio is that? <laughs> but I went for it. Okay, okay. And I did it. Uh -huh. And not only did I raise nine, we raised 19 million. Okay. And went right into the business and got into the business of being a venture capitalist. And it's the most incredible thing ever because every single day I get to meet with people who are trying to change the world, That's trying true. to create That's things true. that no one's ever seen before and try to make it a reality. Right. And that's what I get to do. Right. And it's the greatest thing. Well, one of the things is I was doing a little research. I saw that you were one of the earlier investors in Seamless Web that's now Grubhub. I mean, what a concept. People make a business delivering other people's food? Well, let me tell you, you're, you're right. And let me tell you how many people said that was a crazy idea. Absolutely crazy. And those two founders. What did you see? I saw two founders who had this incredible drive, this incredible passion, and they, then they just were going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to work with people like that. Mm -hmm. And these two guys did an unbelievable job. And then they had their two other founders, and the, and the four of them just created this incredible company. And to work with them from the very, very beginning and make this dream a reality was the best thing in the world. And you have a habit, a practice, an intentionality of doing that consistently. I mean, right here in Center City, you now are involved in the Microsoft Reactor. Um, you are involved, and I heard it on several interviews, in wanting to make Philadelphia a place where people come, where people want to invest, where people want to grow their businesses. Why? Why? You know what? I've been very fortunate, mm -hmm. and I've been really, really lucky to be involved with so many great people, have mm -hmm. so many amazing things happen in my life, mm -hmm. and I want to give back, mm -hmm. and I want to help other people, and I want to allow other people to have the incredible experiences mm -hmm. that I've had. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create a place in Philadelphia that was open and accessible right. to everyone. Mm -hmm. Any race, color, creed, age, didn't matter, that could come in and put their hands on the latest and greatest technologies and to get a partnership and be able to bring a Fortune 50 company like Microsoft to Philadelphia right. and part with, partner with the University City Science Center and Wexford to create this place was amazing. And the fact that this Fortune 50 company decided to put their roots down in Philadelphia with us is one of the things that I 
believe is one of the, the greatest accomplishments that not, not, not specifically just for me, but for, for us and for, for our city, region right, and for the, the city. And I'm just so excited about that and I can't wait to see what happens next because for, to me, when that 16 year old girl who maybe she's from West Philadelphia, mm -hmm. North Philadelphia, the suburbs, wherever, and she comes into this place and puts her hands on the most incredible technologies that maybe not, she may not have been able to, to, to play with at her school, at uh, home, absolutely. but she now puts on the HoloLens and mm -hmm. sees the future and sees virtual reality, sees augmented reality, and gets to learn how to actually make it. Wow. Pretty powerful. Incredible. Pretty powerful. And hopefully she becomes the next amazing entrepreneur that helps to change the world. You know, I have no doubt that that's happening in my, you really put into practice what you believe. You have this book, Six Degrees of Wayne Kimmel, and some of the titles are as an entrepreneur, and my, my father is here in the studio with me. Um, he will tell you that I'm one of those folks, if you say no to me, I hear maybe. And eventually, that's what I hear, and I act on it's going to be yes. And one of your titles is Every No is a Not Yet. Tell me a little bit more about that title well, and why it, it resonates with you. It's all about being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Being an entrepreneur, you have to have the drive. You have to be someone that, you know, that when people tell you you're crazy, your mom <laughs> may call you crazy. Maybe your dad, right? You know, you're, my mother. She said, "Why didn't you stay in school? Why didn't you keep that good job?" Yes. <laughs> I mean, and anyone in your family, your friends, others will say, "That's a crazy idea. That's a crazy mm -hmm. thing." But you as an entrepreneur, as an innovator, as someone who sees things that other people can't see, you may see five years out, and you're like, I know how to get there. Right. And others don't, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if people are calling you crazy, you're moving in the right direction. Right, right. Well, thinking about the future, and you've already put some things into place to help Philadelphia imagine its future. Let's go further out. Let's go to 2025. What do you see for the region as it relates to entrepreneurism? Well, I think we're at an incredible place right now. Mm -hmm. I call this time, I call this generation the Shark Tank generation. Ah, yes. You yes. know, thanks to Mark Cuban, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, he has, he has literally. Um, democratized mm -hmm. the whole idea of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, I mean, the word entrepreneur, what, what, what is it, right? right? I mean, you couldn't right. even, I, I couldn't spell it. Right, like, right. It was always confused, like the E before you <laughs> right. or you before E, I mean, it's-, it's Where does the N go? <laughs> <laughs> but he's done this incredible thing mm -hmm. where you can now watch network TV and learn about business, mm -hmm. learn about pitching, learn about um, valuations. I mean, right. it's, it's incredible what you Vocabulary can, alone. And, and so yeah. I think that in the next five to ten years, we're going to see things that no one could have ever expected. Mm -hmm. And who knows what those things are? Mm -hmm. You know, at, at 76 Capital, we're, my partners and I are all about the convergence between the physical world and the digital world. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out what's next. Because we, won't, we don't leave our house without our phones. Right. But right. we do leave our house. Right. We don't stay home. We could mm -hmm. actually stay home and just use Amazon and use Seamless Web to order mm -hmm. our food or Grubhub today. Right. Or use Skype. Or, or use Skype and, <laughs> right. and never have to be in, in person with anybody. Mm -hmm. But that's not who we're all, who no. we are. That's no. what we're about. No. So we take that digital technology with us into the real world. Mm -hmm. But what will that look like when this mm -hmm. convergence really happens? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're really excited about. And that's what I'm so excited about, to find those entrepreneurs that are figuring that out. And I want to work with them, invest with them, and help them mm -hmm. figure out what the next incredible things are. Well, you're doing that. You're doing that. We've talked a little bit about your roots. And for you, um, your Let's talk a little bit about the philanthropy piece, because in the industrial age, the industrialists, as they got successful, then they moved into philanthropy. And you're relatively young, so um, where do you see philanthropy going, particularly since a lot of the nonprofits are saying that their sources of um, revenue, their sources of funding are drying up? And how, do, how does philanthropy and entrepreneurship, how do those two work hand in hand? Well, I, I, think, you're, I think you're right. I mean, they do mm -hmm. work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's all about helping others. Mm -hmm. And how can we do that? And I tell people 
every day when I get the opportunity to speak with people or just on a one-on-one -on -one situation. No matter how bad your day is, no matter how terrible the things that are going on in your life, there's someone else out there that's having a worse day mm -hmm. and you can help them. Right. And not only can you help them, it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to make this world a better place for the next generation. It's, it's my responsibility to make this place a better place for my children mm -hmm. and then for my children's children. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And that's, what why we're, that's why I believe we're here mm -hmm. on this earth to not just do for ourselves, mm -hmm. but do for others and make this world a better place for the next generation. Doing for others. Speaking of doing for others as it relates to the digital and the physical, I know you said you can't imagine what it might be like, and yet you and your partners are investing in people that had this vision. Um, how can we, with younger people, encourage them to have the space for that vision? So, for example, in the Philadelphia public school system, there are children that go to school and don't have pen and paper. Um, there are kids that have not traveled outside of their neighborhood. So how do you help reach back to the young children? I know you, there's the Microsoft Reactor, but there may not be people that recognize um, that within themselves they can begin to create a vision. How do you reach out to them? Well. It, it's one of the things, one of the reasons why I wrote this book, mm -hmm. and why I'm, I spend so much time trying to s meet and reach as many people as possible, whether it's in person, mm -hmm. whether it's digitally, whether it's through social media, whether it's through being on shows like yours. And again, right. thank you for having oh, me. Oh, thank you. You know, I think it's just so important to try to get the message out there that you can do it, mm -hmm. that it's possible. It's oh, you, you can go make it happen. You really can. You. As, a, as an individual, it's possible. And to constantly tell people that it's right. okay to go give it a shot. I was just gonna say, I was hoping you would, you would use this line. If you don't take the shot, you'll never make a basket. I mean, well, it's a powerful line. Th that's what it is. I mean, yeah. to me, you've gotta go and make it happen. You've gotta take that shot. You'll never score. You'll never win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket, right? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you, you have to get up and get off the couch. Mm -hmm and give, give it a shot, give it a shot in life, and try. Mm -hmm. And you know what? So if you're not successful, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You gave it try a shot. Try something else. You gave it a shot. We started with the concept of significant, and you've got um, one of the chapters in your book is entitled, um, When You're Small, Act Big. And I think that's at the place that I'd like to end our interview on. Because again, a lot of individuals have this mindset, I can't. Um, if I had, oh, I should. And I often say to people, if you're having trouble spelling significant, think of it as it's a sign, if I can, and then trust, trust in myself. And because again, just like entrepreneur, people must spell significant. So talk to me a little bit about when you're small, go ahead and act big. Let's end on that. Well, I, I'll tell you, what's, what's the opportunity today for an entrepreneur, a, an aspiring entrepreneur, mm -hmm. a student, someone who wants to change jobs, there is incredible opportunities today to go mm -hmm. and use the digital tools that are out there to allow you to have your own website, mm -hmm. for you to have your own voice on social media, mm -hmm. to publish your own stories, to right. do your own TV show. Right, right. You it's can so do all these things. Right. There's no one saying that you can't do it because mm -hmm. you could just very quickly pull out your phone, go onto Facebook, go, go live on Facebook. Absolutely, and that's it. And you're out there. You're in, me in media, right? You're in media. Right. And that's, that's what's amazing about today's world. And that's, what's, that's what I believe, that's why so many people have such incredible opportunities to be very successful in the future. What wonderful energy. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I love the smile, I love the team. Thank you, Chad and Jessica, for being here. You, you bring your support. And I think that's another part of being significant and really sharing the hope and encouraging others to, and inspiring others to be what they can be. Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, significant impact. You might be small, act big. If you don't take the shot, 
you won't make the basket. Thanks again, Wayne Kimmel, Managing Partner of 76 Capital, for being on our show. Thank you. Thank you.